Hey guys, Crash here. I'm gonna try to go a little slower on this one for you. Let's do Let's Play, beginning to end, all in one shot. If you ever get stuck, you can pause this video and go back. We're gonna pick up some emulators from the Google Play Store. We're also gonna pick up a couple of extra tools here. Um, I suggest some kind of file manager, it's very useful, and some kind of zip extracting tool. It's also very useful. But right now we're going to worry about getting some emulators from the Google Play Store. So go ahead and launch the Play Store. At the very top you can go to your search bar and we're going to pick up ES File Explorer. I already have it installed but you know how to do it. Click on it. Install. I'm not going to this time because I already have it installed. You want to pick up RetroArch. Now, RetroArch is 99.9% .9 of what we'll be using for launching the games. So, go ahead and go to the Google Play Store and pick it up. I'm going to zip ahead here so you don't have to watch it download, but go ahead and install it, and when you're done, we can catch up. So it's going to download, and then once it finishes downloading, you're going to get to install it. A uh, window should pop up. Wait for it. So you go ahead and uh, open. Once it first opens, it's going to finish building, as with most emulators, so I suggest opening them up once and finish the install process. So the first few things here is, I don't like this view, so I'm going to change it. I'll show you how. There's a couple things we also want to toggle on. If your controller does not work right off the bat, you'll have to set it up. First things first, I want to go to user interface, user interface, and show advanced settings. Then I'm going to want to go to driver and I want to change the menu driver to XMB. Once I do that I'm going to make sure that my save on exit which is in that configuration area and then I'm going to make a save so you're going to go to the very first page, go to Configuration, Save Current Configuration. So it just saves all those changes I just made. Then we're going to quit real quick. And go ahead and clear out these guys. Now when we relaunch RetroArch, it's going to look totally different. I personally prefer this interface better. So we're going to do a quick setup. Now under the gears here you have lots of different things. If you need to set up your inputs, go into input. I like to do the menu toggle as the thumbstick depress, so I press them both and it opens up the menu. You also want to load all the cores. You also want to set up your BIOS. You have all these different options if something's not working. You can scroll down the gears. But down at the bottom here is your directory. You want to go into your directory. The very first option is System BIOS. Now, if you want it on the same card or in the same area, you can go into SD card and then find RetroArch, which is all the way at the bottom. So that's SD card, RetroArch, and then System. Now you can put all your BIOS in there. I already have a BIOS setup, and my BIOS setup is on my external SD card. So I'm going to go to Storage, SD card 1, and I'm going to find my BIOS. Now that my BIOS is set, 
I really don't have to do anything else in here. So let's pick up some cores. When you first open Load Core, there will be nothing. So you want to click on Download Core. It will populate a list. Now, I suggest downloading all of these cores, but for to make this video faster, I'm just going to download a few. As you can see, it's relatively fast per core, but there are a lot. In the long run, it is worth to download all these cores because you have lots of different options. So I'm just going to grab a few here just so I can show you a few things. And as you can see, it is really quick at downloading these cores. So just start at the top, go all the way down. Make sure that you got them. There you go, I got all those cores. Excellent. And then just go ahead and quit. Because you already made the option to save as quit. Next, you'll want to get some kind of Cody. Oh, you'll want to get some, uh, make sure that you have these emulators too. Main for Droid is used a lot, PSP. Uh, just go ahead and grab these guys. Moonlight, if you want to do some game streaming from your PC to your device. And it's not a shield. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go get my Cody Fork. I'm going to go to TeamZT.com. You don't even have to log in. You just scroll on down. And as you notice, we have these little icons and whatnot. If you click on one of the icons, you'll start downloading the APAC right from the front of our website. Now, this one has our wizard already installed. Now, what's cool about that is you can either use whatever fork or whatever you want and install our wizard. And you can use Kodi or SPMC or whatnot. The ones on our front page already have the wizard installed. I remember that uh, this one doesn't work on the device, my tablet that I'm trying to get. So I'm going to grab the other one that's lower, the uh, SPMC, or SMPC. Anyway, uh, I've tested this on basic Kodi and both of our uh, forks that we have on our page, and they work. So pretty much figure out which one you want to use, and go ahead and use it. Yeah, that one's not uh, downloading. So I'm going to cancel it out and scroll down and get the SPMC version. I'm going to download it through Chrome this time, just to make sure that it works. Always say yes. Make sure you have uh, unknown sources in. Uh, allow unknown sources so you can install these. That would be in your settings area. Alright, now that you have it downloaded, let's go ahead and open it up. And we'll hit next. Install. And just like installing any other APAC, it's going to install. Take a couple minutes depending on which, uh, how fast your device is. Fire sticks are going to be a little slower. Shields are going to be extremely fast. The one that I'm using is a mid-range, it's a Fire HD tablet uh, with a uh, IPEGA 9023 controller. Um, if you've seen any pictures of it, you'll know. Kind of looks like a Switch. Uh, decent size screen, I love it. It plays everything very well that I want to do it and I want to do on it. And um, I can also game stream from my PC to it. Uh, been playing Skyrim and a few other P PS2 games. So once it's installed, you can go ahead and close this out. Remember, you can pick up any of them. That one works. It works great on my shield. Uh, this one seems to work better on my tablet. So I'm going to clear out all this stuff. All right. As you can see, I got my RetroArch, and I have my Team ZT APAC. So I'm going to clean up real quick. I'm going to put my emulator with my other one. And then I'm also going to 
move my fork over because I kind of like things all done nice and tidy and in a certain order. So you got everything cleaned up and um, we're going to go right into it and do the first launch. So it's going to launch, it's going to prepare, and it's going to prompt you with a screen with a few, couple of options. Um, DT wizard option. Now, if when it pops up, you're going to get that screen behind there. But I want to register my controller real quick, so I press a button on the controller. You follow the on-screen prompts, press the A button, and then press the corresponding buttons to your controller, and continue on down. Making sure that it all works and everything registers. Uh, if you mess up, you can restart just by clicking on it again. And uh, just follow through. Go slow. Make sure you're doing what you're, what buttons you want to push. And then make sure everything goes through. If you notice that uh, my right stick didn't really go the first time, so I did it again. Now that I'm using my controller to control things, let's continue. I like to add the extra option of clear packages at startup, but you don't have to. So click continue, click build menu, get rid of this screen. And then for us at the very bottom is let's play. So you can either scroll all the way down or you can press up and it will bring you to it. Go ahead and install it like any other Cody build. All right, so go ahead and force close once it finishes installing and open it back up. Head on over to game streaming. Let's make sure that everything worked. So uh, go ahead and pick the system you want to play. And then uh, give it a minute while it opens up because it's uh, getting all the artwork and all the information for the stuff. But once it starts loading up, you'll start seeing pictures and uh, box art showing up. Go ahead and pick the game you want. And go ahead and click launch. It's going to take a second and then it's going to load up. Make sure everything's working. Um, if you did like me, you did both the left and right analog sticks. You press them both in and it will open up the menu. And then uh, you can change your inputs for the core if you want to. You can have any RetroArch function that you want. In the quick menu, you can change stuff per game. You can mess with your uh, safe states core configurations, special control options, etc, etc. Just make sure everything's working. I noticed that I have to map my start button because it's not working, so I'll just use the on screen here. Other than my uh, start button, everything seems to be working. Yeah, kill a guy. Get the mushroom. Pretty responsive. Everything's working pretty good. All right, so uh, let's continue on to bigger and better things. Go ahead and exit on out. And if you ever want to change the emulator, one of the game streaming options is using, go ahead and press and hold the square button or the C button on your keyboard. Menu will open up. Go down to the third option. Update external launcher command. Go ahead and click on it. This is why I had you download all the cores, so you have all these options available to you. Go ahead and pick the corresponding emulator that you want for the system you want to use. There's uh, standalone emulators at the bottom. Um, for MAME, I like to use MAME for Droid. It seems to work better than the RetroArch course. So if it's not set to that, I would switch it to it. But look, at it's got a hundred different cores in here, so if you can't get it to work with one of these, it might not be working. Uh, this is uh, game streaming, so it's entirely off-site or off your device. So go ahead and pick the core you want. I believe I was on Nintendo, so I'll pick uh, Nostopia here. Go ahead and click yes. Okay and it's been updated.
So let's do some local play. You want to go to your file browser to, uh, application that you chose. I used ES File Explorer. In ES File Explorer, you want to turn on a couple of options. So navigate over to the left hand side. I'm going to close that real quick and scroll it down past Recycle Bin. Uh, Recycle bin, if you want to turn it on, turn it off, you can. It helps with saving data if you mess up. Uh, but if not, you can turn it off. What you need to turn on, though, is show hidden files. So go ahead and toggle that on. All right. Now, in the build, I sent a uh, games folder. So we're going to have to go and locate that real quick. So go to local. Uh, your download area for when you get your games that you want might want to know where this is. You'll want to go down to internal storage so we can locate that game folder in Android. You know what, let's start this over. Under internal storage, you'll see the folder called Android. Then data. Find the particular Cody fork that you are using and click on it you'll see a files folder. Click on the files folder. Dot whatever it is for you. Click on that. And now you'll be greeted with the games folder. Go ahead and press and hold the A button so you can get the little copy tab at the bottom there and move it to wherever you want. I've moved mine to my SD card. As you can see, it's right there. Now, if you're going to start moving sets and stuff over, I would, you know, move them over to the SD card so you can start building them on there. It's going to be a little bit easier and faster um, read and write speeds. So go into the games folder and pick the system you're going to be working on. In that system are two folders, an art folder and a ROM folder. In the ROM folder, there are the ROMs and the .info files. The .info files our metadata and extra stuff like that. Um, Let's Play should build those for you. So note your ROMs. Now in your art folder, there's several different folders, but we're mo mainly going to be using four. First, box arts. Put all your box arts in here, as you can see. Then you'll want to do, for fun, cartridges or the little discs or fun little pictures. You put those in those, in that folder. Then you have the marquees or the clear logos. Now you want to toss everything into the corresponding folders so when the program pulls it, everything will go in the right area. Now you can use fan art, tiles, and snap or titles and snaps. I'm using the titles, so set to default whatever picture you want in the right hand corner of the screen. And the little box is going to be in titles, but you can switch it up if you want. So let's go over this all again. In the system that you want to use, there's the art and the ROM folder. Your hyperspin named ROMs should go in there. In your art folders, in the folder of box art, should go your hyperspin named box art. Same with cartridges, hyperspin named cartridges, hyperspin clear logos or marquees, and then your screenshots, all hyperspin named. If it's all hyperspin named, everything will work. So go ahead and back on out that you've moved a set in there. I've done a couple. Go ahead and launch your program. And head on over to the toolkit. Remember where you put your games folder? Well, go ahead and hit Marco's Storage Switcher. Uh, the creator of ROM Flix wrote this and he allowed me to use it. Pretty good guy. So go ahead and continue. Now, what you want to do is you want to pick the location of your games folder, not the games folder itself. So I put mine on the store on the SD card. 
So you want to find the games folder. Don't click on the games folder, but just see it in that window. And then go ahead and click OK. So it should read storage SD card games. If it reads games, games, go back one folder. It will always error at the end there. Don't worry about it. It has done its job. So now we're going to set up some of these main menu options. That will be done in the set, uh, system setup. But I'm talking about these. So when you click on these, it loads up games. So head on over to system setup. Find the system that you're going to be working on. Scroll on down. And then press and hold the X button to bring up that context menu. And this is where you add your ROMs and you edit the launcher. First, let's go take a look at edit launcher. There's a couple options in here that are fun to use. If you scroll on down to manage ROM list, there's a couple options in here. You can rescan your art or you can clear out the list that you have in there right now. Very useful if you make a big switch or you want to switch your art. Press the context menu again, the X button, edit launcher, and then advanced modifications. This is where you can add extra extensions, or if for some reason it didn't switch over, you can fix the ROM path. So that's good to know. So those are the two options you'll probably use the most in there. But go ahead and hit the context, or let me show you inside first. Show you that there's no games. So go ahead and context menu, add ROMs, scan for new ROMs, and it should automatically pull the art that you have put in those folders and the game. So all you have to do is click on them. Now you can set up the scrapper, the scrapers, they work kind of, you can give them a shot. Uh, if you mess with the add-on settings, you can pick your scraper and all that stuff, but I have it already pre-set up for you. So all you have to do is come in here and add your ROMs. If there's ever an update, if you want, just do the update, and then you'll have to come and add your ROMs back. But it's super easy, and as you can see, it's relatively fast. So I added all the ROMs. So let's go in and take a look. All right, see, it's pulling my 3D box art, my log my logos, my cartridges, and my screenshots. Everything looks good. All right, I'm gonna load up another set here that I've already done. I'm not gonna bore you with making you watch the whole thing, but context menu, oh, wait, sorry, let me show you, it's empty. Context menu, scan for new ROMs, and then we'll skip ahead. So now you should be able to just swing, when you open it, just go into one of these main menu options and just click it open. All your box art, your logos, everything else is there. Pretty easy. Got my little insert coin cartridge or insert coin stickers coming out. But yeah, everything's working good. So let's show you how this works. We'll go to our other set to show you that it's working in the main menu. And you can change this main menu. If something's not working on your particular system, you can go into the settings and take it out. But I just put everything in there for ease. So let's make sure that this pulled over as you saw earlier. All right, looking good. Let's give it a little test. All right, loads up just fine, perfect. All right, so there's a few other little fun tips and tricks that you could probably do. Um, if you ever have to delete the build, you don't need to worry about RetroArt because they work in unison, they're independent of each other. So if you need to fix RetroArch, you can just delete RetroArch and fix that. If you just need to fix a build, you can delete the build and fix that. Um, 
if you delete one, it doesn't affect the other, per se. Um, you need them both for to work, but uh, everything else works pretty good. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in next time, and uh, if you have any questions, drop them on down in the comment area, and I'll try to get to you. You guys have a good one.